Hey guys, Jeff here, Dice Setters. So we had the contest with the titanium dice. I actually ended up with uh, two more sets of these. So the winners are Denny Salzberg, Tim Stedman, and Pete Helm. I do have address for Denny. I don't have an address for Tim or Pete. So Tim and Pete, if you can give me an address, I'll be sending you some dice. I will be in Vegas this weekend. And I will be going live Saturday. Um, I plan to do it, I hope, around either 11 or 12 Vegas time, which will be one hour difference in Arizona time, because Arizona does not do a time change. But uh, on the notifications, if you put a little bell there, when I do go live, it'll notify you that we can sit there and watch. Um, my wife will be monitoring it as well, and she'll be reading the text as. Uh, as we, we go live. So hopefully that's cool. Hopefully uh, everything works out like it's supposed to. Hopefully Wi-Fi um, is my friend at Ellis Island. I've never tried uh, going live there. So I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Um, two things about, about dice setting. And I call it dice setting. Some people call it controlled shooting. I think they're the same, and that's the reason I come on to my channel, dice setting, not controlled. There's two things I want to show you, and this will be coming up next, about dice setting. Two mistakes people make. Now, they not, might not be mistakes for you. You might not learn a thing about it. In my industry, and I'm an automotive industry, there are, it's like a water pump. You can go to All Data or many of the other ones, and it will tell you step by step on what to do. Say, like it's a Chevy truck 2008, we could probably do a water pump in less than an hour. I might do it differently than. My lead mechanic but the biggest thing is that at the very end of the job the truck has been test driven the truck is not leaking there is not coolant all over the engine all over the frame and we know it's good for the customer whether we started by removing the fan belt first or by removing the fan shroud just because you don't do things in certain order, as long as the end results are the same, that's fine. I'm not one to sit there and, and dictate, you know, this is the way you got to do it, because it's not. Some things work for me, and some things that I show you don't work for you. But that's okay. You take what you can use, and the rest of the information, you just kind of leave there. But there are two things I really want to show you. And hopefully it will be a huge help for you. Um, and I'll tell you the story first. Um, the first one is a story about my grandfather. My grandfather was the best pool player I could ever imagine or ever seen or, or anything. My grandfather was a uh, road builder. That's all he did. He didn't go to school for road building. He would sit in front of the TV and watch Jeopardy and answer every question that Alex would sit there and ask. We've tried many years to get him to go to Jeopardy, never did. He could do the crossword, the whole entire crossword, all by himself, no help, and probably have it done in 20 minutes. That's just the kind of person that my grandfather was. So when he would go out, and of course he works in California, when you go out, build roads, um, a lot of times the only place that you could eat after the work was all done was at a bar. And most bars in California will have a pool table. And the biggest thing was, if you want to play pool all night long, simple. All you got to do is win. As long as you won, you never had to sit back down. As long as you won, you can control the game. As long as you won, you can sit there and say, you know what? You got to call your shots. Um, and if you miss your shot, it's going to be a cue ball in hand. If you sink the wrong ball, it's going to be ball in hand. If you don't hit your ball first, it's going to be ball in hand. 
being that if you're the winner all the time, you can enforce these rules. That's just the way they play. Now, once he lost, then the other person could dictate whatever rules he wanted. But with those rules, my grandfather played from the moment he got on the pool table until it was time to retire and wake up the next morning. So I learned from him and it was a big deal. It was a big deal to me when I finally, finally, finally beat him. I finally beat him at playing pool. And that was like, that was huge. Um, and I sat there and turned out to do all sorts of things in college playing pool. And I have taken my knowledge of pool and have made it into the craps. So you say, well, how's that? You're playing balls and playing dice. How, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how you can be a dice setter and knowing pool can actually help you. So when I do the demonstration, you'll finally, you'll get it. You'll sit there and say, oh, I got it. So I've taken the concept of playing pool to playing craps because it's still a square table, a rectangle table, and you are aiming for certain things and you have landmines such as people that has a big old stack of, of chips on the pass line and you've got to overcome that. You've got to know how far you've got to throw it so that you miss it. You also don't want to throw it so hard that it goes over the table. So a lot of the geometry and, and the mathematics that go into playing pull also help for playing craps. And then the, uh, the second thing um, I'm going to show you, and the story behind this is um, Chevy has a uh, engine, and um, they're in trucks and Suburbans and whatever, and to save gasoline, as you're going down the road at cruising speed, there's no mountains. Um, the V8 will sit there and sometimes go into a V6 mode, or it could even go into a V4 mode. And there's lots and lots and lots of moving parts and pieces that sometimes just don't go correctly. So that's the story behind the second tip I'm going to show you. So without further ado, here goes the tips, two of them for you this week. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, the first tip I have for you is such as playing pool and playing craps. When you are die setting, you want to have a foundation. It doesn't matter if you're going to put a spin on the dice or not. If you're going to put a spin on the dice, you want a beginning, a beginning placement. Always the same placement. Whether you're going to be throwing flat, beginning placement. There are so many people that want to sit there and take the dice and throw it. There is no beginning placement. It would be the same as wanting to shoot the ball and you are sitting there using this to steady your cue stick. How much better of a shot would you get if you could just hold the bridge and make sure you get that exactly where you want it? You have a starting point. Your starting point is fixed. Same thing with dice. Dice setting. You're going to do a backspin using the cut edge. Right here is where I want to be. I don't want to be touching the table, but I am going to sit there and pull it off a couple inches. And now I know exactly where I am versus holding it up here. You have no idea where you are here. Throwing flat, starting here, going out versus you have no idea where you are here. It is a different starting point. Always have your starting point that you can sit there and document. I know I was one inch off the table when I sat there and threw it above the one or whatever it might be. But a starting documentation of that's where I need to be at. You know, I need to be about an inch, about right there. You can even use these lines for parallel to make sure you sit there and keep your arms straight, just like they do in bowling. 
That's the first one. The second uh, hint, and again, these might not help you a bit, but I know it's going to sit there and help some people. 98 of my throws are not going to be where the dice are going to spin on access. They are not going to do that. I don't like it. I don't do it. The reason for that, and the reason why I do most of mine flat dice, which means that basically I'm going to pick it up and just kind of have it so that when it lands, it's going to land flat, flat face throwing. Because by doing too many things, you've added too much stuff, just like that Chevy engine. We can go from a V4 to V6 to V8. But you know when that engine dies and they want to sit there and put a new one in? I always suggest let's get rid of that and make it a V8 forever. You have less moving parts. The computer won't know the difference because we will reprogram to the computer. And now you have less working parts. Therefore, the engine's going to be working better. So to me, you can sit there and if you move your fingers through this, the dice are going to spread apart. If you sit there and move your thumb as you come off of this, it should stay together. But there's too many moving pieces and parts. And, you know, when it lands, does the dice stay in on access or does it move off access? To me, that's just too many moving parts, just like that Chevy engine. Ford has them, too. But uh, mostly Chevy is the one that actually got that started. So let's just do away with that. Let's get away from having extra moving parts, extra moving pieces. And we're going to keep it simple. As K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. Um, it's a huge acronym that we use in the automotive industry. The more simpler you can make it, the better it's going to be. And we're just going to pick the dice up and just kind of let her go. And she's going to hit the wall. And that's going to be the, be the beginning of that tumble. Less moving parts, less moving pieces, less chances of having an oops. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. I'm just putting it out there. That's the way I do it. And I hope that helps somebody. Thanks for listening. Uh, for my demonstration today, we're going to be starting off with 500. There's 500 there. We are going to do 25, 25, 30, 30, 25, 25. We will be playing a $25 table, so we're going to have $25 in our pass line. We will be playing the bonus. And I will sit there and be playing the horn each and every time instead of the field. That way, if I roll a horn number, I will get paid. It won't be a wasted throw. So I'm going to set the table up, and we'll be back in a second. 25, 25, 30, 30, 25, 25, 25, 5 for the dealers. And this is the way I'm going to set it up. I'll go ahead and set it up now this way. These are off until the point comes up. Um, it's going to be two on the yo, two on the three, one on the two, one on uh, midnight. I am hopping big red from nine. Face 15 to one for a set of three. This is my all tall small for me, five by five, all tall small for the dealers, one, one, one. I should have hopped the four. I don't know why I didn't. For some reason, I always roll a four on my opening roll. I don't know why. I even do that at the casino, too. When I think about it, it never happens. When I do it, it doesn't happen. I don't know. I'm going to just put six bucks here on the horn, and I already told you what it is. These are now working.
gonna be a nine. Bad roll. Bad roll for my part. We'll lose our five. We're gonna pair our five back. Excuse me, we lose our six. We're gonna put our six back. Um, that was a nine. And that one right there is gonna be 35. So I'm going to give that one more. Give this one one more and give its partner one more. So nine, I'm going to press that one up, press the two beside it, or press the one beside it. It's going to be a 10. We lost our six. We're going to get our six dollars back. We hit a ten. The vig, I won't worry about the vig at this point. We're going to. Press that one. The other side of the 10 will be the four. We're going to press that guy up and we're going to press the nine up. Eight. We're going to lose our six. We're going to get our six back. We're going to mark the eight. And that eight has $36 on it. Six. Lose them. Or six. Put the six back up there. Mark the six. Six is going to be forty two.
So we're going to lose one, two, three, four, four bucks. And four dollars back. Yo, that's going to pay us 30 bucks. One, two, three, four, five. We'll do one more. And then we're going to turn everything off. Eight. Lose our six. We mark the eight. That's going to be 56. We're going to tell the dealer off because it's about the short game, like the bone thrower says. There's no reason to lose everything that's up there. And there goes a seven. We lose our all tall small. We were uh, one away on the 12 and two away on the, no, three away. The two, three, and five. This was off. So. All this, all this gets added to the pot. We lose that guy. Started with five hundred. Hundred sixty five, sixty six, sixty seven, sixty eight, one hundred and sixty eight. Um, too bad we didn't get the bonus. We knew where, uh, where we should have stopped at, and good thing because one more roll we have lost everything. You could press it up further if you wanted to, but to me, that's an easy way. I've done this before in another video. That you press up the one you hit plus the one on the other side. Simple, it's easy. But again, if you wanted to press up more, you could. And the only one that we didn't hit was the five. And we didn't hit the four for the second time. Definitely uh, share, like, subscribe. Let's see if we can't get the subscriptions up there higher. And uh, definitely please like this if this has helped you. Let's get a lot of likes in there too. 
the more you guys like, the more you guys, you know, comment, the, the, the faster the video goes out and reaches other people that have no idea about my channel. So if you like it, you sit there and say, man, other people need to find your channel. Please sit there and share, like, subscribe. And I will be in Vegas and we will be going live on Saturday. And it'll be probably either 11 or 12 Vegas time, which should make it um, 10 or 11 Arizona time. And I'm from Arizona, and that's why I say that. But uh, we will be going live, and uh, I want you guys to participate, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll have a good time. And if you like it, sit there and tell me you like it. If you didn't like it, uh, well, you know, you can tell me that too. Um, I'm listening. And for those of you that won the contest, please give me your addresses. That way I can ship out those dice to you. Thanks for, uh, for everyone that played. And uh, we'll be doing more of that later on. Thank you.